will write a contract. Okay. Since you're in the bank, we'll have a contract. You write an argument. Okay. Other. <laughs> okay. So these are some stereotypes of uh, Muslim women. But this picture gives you a counterexample. That yeah, sure, there are some women like that, but not all. And why are they like that or not? Okay, we'll listen to that. Okay, we we talk about the veil this morning. Dr. Warren mentioned it, and uh, <clears throat> you know there are two interpretations to this. If you talk to some Muslim women, you say, uh, "Why are you in veil?" They would say, "I feel free because when I'm in veil, no one would harass me, and I can walk in the street more safely." and I don't have to show my flesh and people take me as I am. But there's a counter argument saying, no, you're being brainwashed and you're being told you are free, but you are not. And you think you are free because you're told you are free. Okay, that's the argument, huh, number one. And then among liberals, this is a critique of liberals. Many liberals are, uh, how do you call it, tree-hugging, Kumbaya types. You want tolerance, you want to accept everything, but Dr. Horace said, but you put a limit. But make up your mind. Okay. So this is the one that said, no, no, we accept everything, let them be. That's our culture. And those liberals said, excuse me, you want to put you want to accept all cultures, even those that beat their wives? Huh? When do you draw the line? So there are liberals that say, no, that's hogwash. There's some liberals that say, no, let's accept, let's not question, that's how they are. Okay. There are debates among the liberals. But then Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who is she? Philosophy. <laughs> Jean-Jacques Rousseau. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Roy will tell you one very important education book was written by him. It'll come up in one of his six exam questions. Do your 598 or your dissertation. Qualifying. You better read Jean Jacques Rousseau. I'm not kidding, right, Dr. Hardy? You ask that question all the time. It's a meal or sentimental education. And he said, We were born free, but everywhere we are changed. L'homme est né libre, mais partout il est dans les fers. Okay? Those are the exact words in French. But then he said, we live in society where there's so many barriers and chains and walls that we created. And many times, we don't know that we're not free. Because we live in an illusion. We think that's how things should be. But naturally, we were free. And we are now in society where there's so many restrictions. Therefore, if you live in society, we will remove the barrier and we will force you to be free. This is one French explanation of one of many. Why we will not allow you to wear your veil. We will force you to be free. Again, this is a debate. Huh? It, it, it happened in France. I kind of understand the different logic working there because they have the Rousseau philosophy. That everyone should be free, and that's not freedom. That's one argument. The other argument, Yes, we are. We're totally free to do whatever we want. This is true freedom. Okay. There's no resolution. It's a constant dialogue and debate. <clears throat> okay. And then is this same book again? They talk about what is radical feminist pedagogy. And many things come into play. One, you assume there is a dominant way of thinking you don't accept it, which will include male privilege, remember, the first thing we saw, and then you will not accept that, you will fight it, the predominance of that uh, male privilege. And then you have to unmask power, overcome your estrangement in society, <coughs> learn to be free, and use logic, and then practice democracy. These are seven requirements when you're doing radical feminist pedagogy. Okay? Linguistic feminists would say there's so many things wrong with our language. Why do we say chairman? Why, why don't you just shorten and say chair? 
And why emancipation? Where's the woman? And why man whole? Where's the woman? Why history? Why not her story? Why he? He represents he and she. And many of us, including women, were told, oh no, we really mean she. Like, yeah, says who? Who made language, linguistics? Let's change it. We will not accept he representing she. And then spokesman. Okay. So linguistic feminists are really picky on the language. Okay. Say, so be careful when you talk. You know Frey Ray? No. Maybe. Yeah. Some yeah. of you know Frey Ray? Yeah. Maybe two of you. Then I'll skip it. Take a class with Dr. Ori. A whole class on Ori. Uh, on Freire. <laughs> okay, Jodie Foster, you know her, right? Yeah, she's one actress who refused to play the cutie, beautiful woman role. She, in fact, would want to play roles which are written for men. Come to think of it, read her life and the, the roles that she chose. Panic Room, Silence of the Lamb, except Anna the King, you know, it's really Anna in <clears throat> reality. Contact Blood of Others. Okay. Blood of Others was written by Simone de Beauvoir. It's about the partisans fighting the, uh, the Nazis during the Second World War. <clears throat> it's a good film. And uh, should play a very strong woman role, not the typical, <coughs> stereotypical roles of women. So it can be done. And she came out, right, later recently. Okay. Back to Habermas, she has three types of, yeah, sorry. I don't know that. She came out like, the last, was it the Oscar or something? Golden Globes. Golden, Golden Globes thing. So I thank my wife. It's something that people knew for a long time, but oh, she okay. didn't, she never talked about her yeah. personal life like, oh, much. And, um, I didn't know till the Golden Globe, people were, there was buzz about it. Yeah. But people knew. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, was, it was stuff that I knew for uh, okay. circles that talked about for a while, but she was a very private person. And it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't about. But I get, yeah, she said she made a promise she'll come out to somebody who died. So she came out. Yeah, finally. Okay, back to Jurgen Habermas. Uh, there's three types of knowledge. So knowledge alone will not set you free. Like if you know <clears throat> uh, how to teach, how to drive a car, how to deal with customers. That's just technical. If you go to a training program, you have to actually practice it. But not all knowledge will lead to freedom. You have to, some knowledge would be emancipatory, not just technical or practical. Like if you know that women should not be treated like a doormat, you should practice it. And that will lead to the emancipation or offense, offense in patience. Okay, of both men and women. Okay, <clears throat> so okay, there are different types of knowledge. Get okay, back to test. Uh, I'll skip. Now the history and her story. Who is she? Yeah, I know you don't know anything about feminists. So you're excused. <laughs> what? I know. I'm teasing. Uh, who is she? Okay, she's from south of the border, all the way south. Okay. She's from Chile. <laughs> Violeta Parra. Now, what's so important about her? Yeah, Doctor, where why should I even have her picture here? Where's Violeta Parra? <laughs> Violeta Parra was a very important uh, singer. singer. Folk singer, she wrote about the common life of the people, including indigenous people. Yeah. <clears throat> and she had written many songs. Uh, even when I was a little boy in our school, Jesuit school in the Philippines, we were singing beautiful songs. I said, this is not a typical song. I thought they were church music. When I was much older, I went to Berkeley. I said, this is Violeta Parra's song translated into Filipino language. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, 
So I didn't know her song tra traveled to the Pacific, you know, from Chile to the Philippines. So she had many folk songs. And the Jesuits, of course, are very open-minded and you know, let us listen to different music. <clears throat> and some of her songs were popularized by other people, too, <clears throat> all over Latin America. Yeah, so she became well known directly and also indirectly through Mercedes Sosa and uh, Joan Baez. Don't know Joan Baez. Yeah, she's too old for you. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, so historical periods, this is the, what we call as the diachronic, the long way of looking at feminism. Okay? There are different stages in human history. The indigenous or before the colonial uh, powers came, the ancient times, China, Greece, you know, Rome, uh, feudal times, modern times, and postmodern period. Okay? So you have from the modern year of Renaissance, colonial, and postcolonial. And they have different ideas of women in the different historical moments. So you have, okay, pre-feminism. Feminism kind of came during the modern period. And then you have uh, feminism itself, and then post-feminism. That could be part of, post-feminism could be part of uh, uh, the conservative, I'm sorry, uh, post-feminism could be part of the conservative post-modernism, according to Freire. Freire made a distinction between conservative and progressive postmodernism and his uh, pedagogy from the heart. Okay. <clears throat> now, so these are the three periods during which feminist ideas have changed through different times. Okay. The way we look at things is based on our biases. And one sociologist, Okay. French said that there are three ways of looking at things. The one is religious. So what texts are important when you look at religion? For example, what literature? The Bible. And philosophical, what literature would be important? Socrates, Plato. Socrates, Plato. Scientific? Newton. 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 Einstein. 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 Stephen Hawking. Okay. So you have three sets of literature with different views of women. Okay. Now, uh, who's Mulan? Chinese word. She, she fought underneath the mask. I don't know if people know she was a woman, but she was fighting in battle. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. In general, this is a story of a woman uh, who had to, who wanted to fight the war, not because she's war loving, but because each family has to give a person to the war effort. And normally it's a man. That would be her father. And she said, I will not let my father go, then I'll dress up as a man and do the war for my father. Okay, and then there's a Disney version of it. Thank you. 